Welcome back, my friends, for another fun reloading video. Today we'll be continuing our series on the load development method without a chronograph. And the whole point of this is to reduce the amount of components we have to use to find a usable load for our gun. So for instance, we're not going to pick, say, five charge weights and shoot a five shot group for each of those charge weights. That would have been a 25 shot test, which is gonna eat up through your primers and your powder and your bullets much faster than if we do it this way. Now remember, if you have a chronograph, you should certainly be using it when you're doing your own load developments. And of course, if you have the components to spare, Shooting a bunch of different groups could help you dial in something, but this is just going to be quick and fast and to the point, and it'll make your gun function, and it won't be over pressure, so it'll be safe, and it'll uh, give your brass more life that way also. So yes, I did use 10 bullets on our first test, but if I were only testing one powder, we would still have 95 bullets left and 95 primers out of a little tray there. But we're just playing around here for the sake of discussion and so on. So I picked two different powders that we can play with. And if we remember in our first video, we picked 8208 XBR starting at 21.8 grains. We went up in three tenths of a grain increments up to 23 grains where Gordon Reloading Tools said we're going to max out at 55.7 thousand PSI, which is well below our 62,000 K 62,000 K, 62 K PSI maximum for 556. And now if we take a look at our Shooter's World Precision projected data, we started at 23.8 grains and went up to 25 grains, which is supposedly over pressure based on our Gordon Reloading Tool data here. I did see some flattening of the primer up on the very top end at 25 grains. However, there was no uh, ejector swipes or stamps on the case head or anything like that. And we're actually getting almost 100 feet per second more from the shooter's world than we are from the 8208. But I'm not specifically worried about a velocity number here I'm trying to reach. Again, we're just looking for pressure and cycling the gun reliably. And then, so since we didn't see any pressure, I'm going to just go two tenths under the the max because when I did this first test it was 40 degrees outside oops and now that it's you know 60 70 here we're gonna see different sorts of pressure so I'm gonna start two tenths under our maximum and start at 22.8 and 24.8 for our powders here today and then since I've just picked the one charge we're gonna do five shot groups at this point in our load development so pretend I only had the one powder I'm testing we took five shots in our first um, step of the test, if you will, and now we're taking five more shots and putting us only at 10 bullets. And if it shoots half decent, which to me would be, you know, an inch or two maybe at 100 yards, which is good enough for my general plinking purposes, then I might not be uh, too hesitant to just load up another 50 or whatever to have set aside or for the next range day. However, if this were some sort of self-defense load or a hunting load or something along those lines, then I might work a little harder on dialing in the most accurate round that I can, because we all know shot placement's more important, right? So anyways, enough of that. I'm going to size up our brass here, and then we'll measure and see if we need to trim and do anything else from there. I haven't tumbled our brass from the last range trip. They are still primed, and they've got the charges written on them. But I'm just going to go ahead and size them as is. They're currently soaking in some one shots, so I'm going to wait for that alcohol to evaporate. And we'll get on with the sizing here. While we're waiting for that to dry, we'll take a look at our projectiles. If you've never seen, this is the 75 grain boat tail hollow point from Hornady. Item number 2279. We are using the CCI number 41 small rifle military primers here today. Here's a nice close-up look here at the 8208 XBR. Yes, it actually has that golden hue to it. It's not just because it's in the RCBS tray up against the golden label there on the bottle. It's also a nice short stick. So when you're using your powder measure, it's less likely to get caught up compared to, say, the Shooter's World that we have here. And then a quick glance over at the Shooter's World Precision. This is basically their version of Varget, and it's got a slightly shorter stick than Varget does, but it supposedly burns rather similarly, 
And I've had pretty good luck with it so far in the 35 Remington. And today's OAL is going to be two and a quarter inches here. So I think our one shot has had plenty of time. I've got my die set here with the Lee set in the RCBS rock chucker. And I'm going to go ahead and size our brass. All right, now we've got everything sized. So I'm gonna go ahead and see if we need to trim. And our maximum case length for 223.556 is 1.76 inches. And after we've sized, this one only grew, looks like 20 thousandths after being sized. These were trimmed down to 1.75. All right, that one's a little longer, but we're still under the 1.76. Beautiful. It doesn't look like we have to trim. I will clean up the case mouth a little bit here and I'll just go ahead and uh, give them a quick chamfer real quick like. Ooh. Did this Shooter's World case grow? Let me make sure my calipers didn't go crazy. All right. Might have to trim these after all. Okay, so the XBR cases are good. However, oh wow. There's a shorty. Good thing I started with the most inconsistent cases I had laying around, apparently. So I've got one to trim and one is even under length. Wow. Perfect. We'll uh, trim this up real quick and I'll be back with you. No need to get out the whole drill or anything for one case, so I'm just going to hold the lock stud part here with my nice little Lee trimmer. And we can do this one by hand. Wow, still pretty slippery from that lube, Jesus. All right, I think we got her. Maybe I'm lying. We're still taking off some material here. This sucks by hand. I, why didn't I get the drill out? Jeez. Okay, we'll go ahead and touch her up here just a little bit. All right, let's see what she weighs. Or, you know, measures. Would you look at that? We are perfect. Okay, I'm just going to hit these other nine cases real quick. And we will get on with the priming, the powder, and the seating. Hot damn, nothing looks better than some nice prepped up brass, I'll tell you what now. Okay, I'm just going to wipe this lube off and uh, run a little Q-tip through the necks to get any shavings out of there, and then we'll prime. For priming today, again, we've got the CCI 41s. I've got my standard capacity RCBS primer tray too, and we're just going to do it on the Dillon real quick. That last primer there didn't get quite seated all the way, so I had to set it back in there and run it through again. And we didn't quite smash the hell out of it, but it almost turned on us, and that could have been bad. I would have lost like six cents there. 
Now that we're all primed up, we gotta weigh out our charges here. So I'm going to be verifying our weight on the RCBS 505. And that will be after I get sort of close here on the crappy digital scale. I'll trickle up on the RCBS to finish it off. So I just grabbed the first scoop I could find. This is a 1.6 cc from the Lee Dipper. Uh, my first charge here with 8208 is going to be 22.8 grains. And I'm just going to see what one scoop of this is uh, roughly equal to. Okay, 23.6. We're a little hot here. So we'll just scoop some out. I'll make sure I'm light. And now I'm going to put it up here on the beam scale. And we will trickle it up to that perfect 22.8. Beautiful. Now we'll just use my cute little sparkly 3D printed funnel here. And we will get four more of these weighed out. So here's the quick drive-by powder check. It's kind of hard to get the camera in focus, but it looks like we're all pretty even across the board. So we should have 22.8 for each of our charges making it as consistent as we can here. I'm gonna go ahead and seat these real quick and then I'll start throwing our powder with Shooter's World Precision. So I'm changing over powders here. I'm cleaning out my trickler of the 8208 and we're gonna use some precision. But a quick tip, I like to use some duster here just to make sure we've got all those little flakes and sticks and everything out of my powder measure, out of my trickler, you know, just so we don't have anything getting mixed up or anything crazy like that happening. <laughs> And that's about all it takes. It's not too complicated, really. So now we need 24.8 grains of precision here. So I'm going to see what one scoop will give us with this powder here. That one was a little short, but it's just over 20 grains. I can go ahead and get a little extra scoop and then trickle the rest. And again, with the sparkly pink, red, funnel had a couple sticks stick in there and our precision here's got a little more case fill but we'll do four more of these and check them all before we start seeding our bullets here and then here's all five of our cases i don't believe we'll be compressed but uh, if we get a little crunch it's not the end of the world. So we've already got our seating dial dialed in here from using the XBR. But I figured I'd bring you in real quick and we'll just uh, seat some of these here. Ooh, I heard a little crunchy. Oh yeah, we are compressed, but no big deal. Lots of loads like being compressed. So we'll see if precision acts the same. So after we've seeded all of our Rice crispy Crunchy powder charters there, we went ahead and crimped everything. I'd say it's a pretty light crimp. And there you have it. This is phase two on the load development method without a chronograph. So we're going to take our two powders out here and shoot a couple groups with our five rounds each. We're not necessarily comparing one powder to another. We're just seeing if we can find any sort of accuracy with this random load we chose after we decided whether or not we had excessive pressure signs. You have made it this far through the video. Thank you so much for hanging out. I super appreciate your time. Perhaps we can both learn something from these tests. So make sure to stay tuned for the range report. We will have more soon, as soon as I can get to the range, in fact. So thanks again for hanging out, guys. We will see you in the next video. Have a good one.